Good afternoon. I'm pleased to be here to speak to the Tennessee Human Rights Commission hearing held here in Nashville on behalf of the Council on Women's Opportunity. I do bring you greetings from the Tennessee Economic Council on Women and its companion organization, the Women's Economic Council Foundation, which focuses on issues relating to women from an economic perspective. The Tennessee Economic Council on Women is, uh, was created in 1998 by the Tennessee General Assembly and is celebrating its sweet 16th birthday this year. For the sake of following me, I'm going to do, I know it's late in the afternoon, so I'm going to do three things. I'm going to tell you a little bit of who we are in our history. I'm going to tell you something about our study and what we found, and then I'll summarize it with our recommendations. Our agency is governed by a 21-member board of women and men from across the state, appointed by the governor, the lieutenant governor, the uh, Speaker of the House, and several legislative caucus organizations. We are administratively attached to the Office of the Secretary of State. Our mission is to serve as an economic in, uh, advocate for women. And our purpose is research, advocacy, and outreach. We do research solely from an economic lens, and we report our findings to the governor, to the legislature, elected and appointed officials, groups and organizations, and the general public. Through the years, the agency has done research on topics that include the economic impact of women's political participation, insufficient preventive health care, women on businesses, just to name a few. Our most recent research, as Director Watts mentioned, extends the report released in 2006 on domestic violence. The 2013 report focused on domestic violence, sexual assault, and human sex trafficking, resulting in the economic impact of violence against women. The results were and are astounding. The report revealed that violence is a thief. In much the same way that a robust education can open minds to new opportunities and unprecedented achievement, Violence closes doors and cripples the human ability to grow and to innovate. At the hands of a stranger, and even more often a loved one, women in Tennessee are being coerced, intimidated, battered, and assaulted in alarming numbers. In recent years, Tennessee has regularly ranked among the worst in the country when counting the number of women murdered by men. And estimates indicate that one in three women will experience domestic or sexual violence in their lifetime. I know that Pat Shea spoke to you earlier and probably gave you all of those types of statistics. Crimes like domestic violence, human sex trafficking, and sexual assault have a lasting impact on a victim's ability to earn for herself, provide for her family, live a healthy, pain-free life, and reach her full potential in her community. The reality of this hardship is personal and immeasurable. But the way in which violence can derail a woman's ability to excel or to more fully contribute to her community has ramifications that extend deeply into each of our lives. The chief goal of our study was to explore the costs that we incur under the current low-budget, response-oriented approach to these crimes and to highlight the potential return on investment that a robust push for prevention could bring by weakening the generational cycle of violence that feeds the suffering. In Tennessee and throughout the world, women face a unique and troubling set of threats that are not only physically and socially and emotionally apparent, but also have a dramatic impact on their ability to, to participate wholly in our economy. The suffering of the victims of crimes like domestic violence, human sex trafficking, and sexual assault is incalculable. And the study's aim is not to diminish the significance of the suffering. Instead, its purpose is to more fully grasp the myriad costs of these crimes, to better understand the fullness with which they impact every member of our community, and to more effectively combat them. Our methodology was varied. We held public hearings, conducted focus groups, and statewide surveys, and reviewed existing research to prepare the study. 
We had significant partners with the project throughout the state. In the Nashville area, they included the YWCA of Nashville and Middle Tennessee, and also the Ys of Memphis and Knoxville. Belmont University, various departments with the city of Nashville, including the police department and several health organizations. Statewide groups included the Tennessee Coalition to End Domestic and Sexual Violence, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, the Department of Safety and Homeland Security, and others. We brought in officials from various entities that encounter these crimes, law enforcement, the judicial system, medical and mental health care officials, social service agencies, insurance and government, and faith-based and immigrant organizations. Overall, there were more than 100 witnesses with more than 700 attendees with strong local support and media exposure throughout the state and beyond. Hundreds of surveys were distributed across the state through various statewide agencies and associations such as the Sheriff's Association and social service providers. There were more than 65,000 reported cases of domestic or sexual violence crimes perpetrated against women in Tennessee in 2012. The vast majority of reported cases incur in the home. We've come to describe them in their entirety as violence against women, or VAW. But we'll take a moment to, dis to discuss them separately before addressing the overall cost that the council has uncovered. Often sexual in nature, as well as domestic violence, manifests itself in a wide variety of behaviors and related crimes committed against individuals and their property, including both familiar abuse and intimate partner violence committed against either gender. If there was just one observation about domestic violence that, we, that I'd like for you to leave to, have, to remember today, it would be that these crimes impact an unbelievably large number of women each year, almost 60,000 reported, in every walk of life across this state. No matter what county they live in, the color of their skin, or the money they make, women and girls in Tennessee are at risk and one in three will be victims of domestic violence or sexual violence in their lifetime. Case information shows that domestic violence was an element of 82,000 cases of, or more than half of all crimes reported against persons in 2012 and accounted for a full 10% of all crimes reported in Tennessee. Victims were female in approximately 59,000 or 72% of all domestic violence cases. What's more, the crimes are thought to be among the least likely to be reported, or so when we talk about, so when we talk about approximately 60,000 cases, researchers report that we might be missing half or even many more. And while some of these instances will involve the same victim and the same perpetrator, most represent a unique victim in Tennessee who is likely experiencing a pattern of violence that extends beyond the reported incident. This is enormously significant from an economic perspective because the victims of violence are dramatically impaired by these experiences and the public response to violence is very expensive. As you'll hear in a moment, the methods of verbal and emotional abuse, violence and degradation that abusers use to control their victims And I want to point out that domestic violence is not just violence, it's an issue of control. Significantly undercuts on a grand scale the ability of women to achieve economic stability and independence. In the area of human sex trafficking, it is a relatively new term in our language. We are used to the words prostitute, pimp, and most of us probably have a pretty good idea of what we think they imply. Unfortunately, our understanding of this crime is growing, and an estimated 1,000 Tennessee runaways and throwaways ages 12 to 16 on an average are brought into this industry which traffics many more thousands each year, and few of them will survive it. 
Perhaps the most shocking realization about trafficking in Tennessee came with a 2011 TBI report. And this study showed that thousands of instances occur across the state and they happen to adults and minors alike. We found that adult and minor trafficking are very similar and very widespread and these and there are only 25 2,500 to 5,000 cases that could be identified during the TBI study in 2011. We know that those numbers will increase as the TBI continues its work to train authorities to identify these types of crimes and as a system to better track incidents is implemented each year, and they have already begun that. Typical victims in Tennessee aren't what we might expect. They are girls and sometimes boys from here or nearby states, and they are young. They are often recruited by charismatic strangers who find them in need of something, shelter, food, affection, or an escape from violence. Some are recruited by someone in their community. Others are first forced to have sex for money or drugs by their own parents. For that matter, many may have left home to escape sexual violence only to become a trafficking victim. Unlike domestic violence victims, trafficking victims are much more likely to come from poverty. If they didn't have a drug addiction before, their trafficker will foster one and use it, along with any other method necessary to control them. That control means that they will sell their bodies to strangers several times each day. Another distinction from what we traditionally think of prostitution, trafficking, victims are most commonly sold online. While the Craigslist adult section was taken down in 2010, others exist all over the world. Go to the adult services section of Nashville's Backpage.com and you'll see hundreds of women and girls who are passing through town and looking to share their company with site visitors. It's happening right here under our noses. Beyond the horror these crimes inflict from a moral and emotional perspective, these women will also struggle to become an independent part of the economy. Without better awareness and intervention, thousands of women and children will continue to be victimized in this state every year and very few will get their GED or work a normal full-time job, let alone consider starting a business. Now let me get to the cost in the few minutes I have left. These are bleak examples that we don't have the time to fully describe that I've just spoken of. And there is no value that can be placed on human life. But there is a cost to the services and the lost gains that result from these crimes. I'll spend the last few minutes describing those costs. In the area of social services, Social service organizations provide a tremendous volume and a variety of services to victims of VAW crimes. I'm sure Pat Shea described that in detail to you. So I'll get to the total cost. The total cost identified reached more than $181 million in 2012. Law enforcement. Law enforcement agencies across Tennessee reported that more than 64,000 VAW-related offenses in 2012. Based on the information reported, costs relating to patrol response, booking, offender holdings, and imprisonment, and investigation in these cases total more than $36 million in 2012. The judicial system. District attorneys, general, and other legal service providers such as Legal Aid of Tennessee report that more than 161,000 hours of pro bono legal representation was provided to victims during 2012. At a conservative valuation of $200 per hour, these free services and other costs that were reported to the Tennessee Economic Council on Women total more than $36 million in 2012. Healthcare. Because of the variety in service delivery and payment, healthcare costs were deemed to be most effectively measured by the increase in insurance premiums that VAW crimes are estimated to cause. 
Research indicating increased use of services was analyzed and determined to be responsible for approximately $7 per member per month in commercial health plan premiums and $10 per member per month in 10 care. That means that a household of four with commercial coverage is currently paying approximately $28 a month or $336 a year in additional health insurance premiums due to the care needed by victims of domestic and sexual violence. When accounting for the total number of insured, insured individuals in the state, the increase in premium payment reaches a statewide cost of $438 million every year. Workplace loss productivity. Testimony offered during the hearing series indicates that women who are targeted by VAW crimes tend to exhibit high levels of absenteeism and presenteeism in the workplace as a direct result of victimization. This can be caused by injury, anxiety, depression, legal or medical appointments. We estimate that between the loss of productivity and wages involved in these phenomena and the additional out-of-pocket costs to employers for security systems, hired guards, staff training, and legal exposure, the cost of violence against women to employers is likely greater than $203 million. Children's services. Approximately 40% of the children in Tennessee's Department of Children's Services system have experienced or witnessed VAW crimes committed against the female. Reports from DCS agents indicate that these children require disproportionately high levels of daily care and it's anticipated that VAW exposure exacerbates the agency's spending. We could not calculate victim by victim, case by case, how much that was. But we can share with you that children with exposure are estimated to cost more than $161 million in residential placement alone and were likely targeted by a majority of the agency's $527 million budget in operational spending. Beyond this, no measurable estimate can be calculated. Similarly, in victims lost, it is incalculable, but we can describe its shape. Control like that seen in domestic violence fosters dependence and insecurity by inhibiting education and careers, limiting financial literacy, isolating victims from family, friends, and professional networks, undercuts the, ca the capacity to trust, causes physical and mental trauma, leads to absenteeism, presenteeism, and long-term expenses. Our subtotal to fully account for many of these expenses would be impossible, but when we add together those that the council has gathered, we can report that on an annual basis, as a result of violent crimes against women, Tennessee loses or spends more than $888 million per year. That's almost a billion dollars. We treat this number as a subtotal because the grand total is immeasurable, incalculable, and unquantifiable. Moving forward, our recommendations are that there are, should be programs for prevention and education. They are needed to identify victims and break the cycle of violence. Our number one recommendation is to get involved with your community and spread the word about the cost of these crimes and that they mean to and what they mean to women and what they mean to our community. The cost is far greater to ignore any longer. Well, when the report was released at our annual summit in last October, we did a widespread advocacy campaign. Strong media, not only uh, locally, but nationally and internationally. So 
So the, uh, we had a major piece with Al Jazeera Network, which is, which is worldwide. Of course, we shared reports with the governor, the members of the legislature, and they find it astounding that public funds are going to, so much public funds are being spent on these crimes that can easily be uh, eradicated when we just, when we focus on the issues of control. Uh, when a man, if I may, uh, Pat told me not to beat up on the men too much, <laughs> but uh, when a um, man in many cases beats up on his wife or partner and is only cited with anger management, only exacerbates the situation. Uh, he's been embarrassed in front of his friends and colleagues, and so when that is over, he comes back, returns, and the woman receives even more victimization. So that's where the faith-based community, other organizations where men talk to men to get them to understand what is, uh, what is happening. But our focus is to make the public aware of the cost of this. There are many social service agencies that deal with this from a social service point of view, a health care, the VAW. Our goal was to look at it from an economic perspective so that we could provide that information of how much it's costing. Did I answer the question? Yes, you did. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, is there any legislation, do you think, coming out of this? Well, there's been some great legislation dealing with the DVI and sex trafficking. Uh, it has been, uh, it's been, now it's de uh, decriminalization for a minor to be uh, charged with prostitution when she's a victim of trafficking. So there are a number of pieces that the TBI is working with, and it just came out with a new report in dealing with that area. Uh, in the other areas, uh, Kathy Wash with the uh, Coalition to End Domestic and, Sex uh, Domestic and Sexual Violence Against Women has been lobbying and worked very closely with legislators on some particular bills in that area this year. We are not a lobbying agency, so we don't lobby, but what we do is report what is happening and uh, get it out. Yes, sir. Now, now make just a quick comment. Personally, <coughs> I've been the grand jury foreman for my county for 10 years, which is 20 panel grand juries. And in Eastern Tennessee, DUIs and drugs, especially on the federal, are our biggest problem. But third, I would rank without a clinical study is spousal abuse. The thing that disturbs me about having it, or, or watching the grand juries handle it, there's very little sympathy or empathy to the victim in my part of the state. So I just make that comment because I, I applaud your effort at prevention and education. We absolutely need it. Because I've witnessed numerous cases where the grand juries actually fall victim. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. From back in 2006, when this <coughs> study was done, the original dated in 2013, I was struck by what violence against women <coughs> cost the businessman. Because who needs this aggravation? We'll just let her go. I don't want this crazy husband coming around and doing all this stuff, you know. And the retraining of a person to take that person's place, the lack of sympathy for that victim is astounding. I'm proud to say that in Memphis, we are holding seminars for businessmen through the Memphis Area Women's Council to help them understand the dynamics of what's taking place and to somehow, some way, say that the culture of this business will not tolerate this in our employees' homes. Thank you. And there have been a number of studies to undergird the point that it is now more than a personal issue. What happens in the home is now transferring to the workplace where the husband goes to the job. And not only is the woman shot, hurt, there are other innocent bystanders who are also in that situation. There have been case after case that has verified that. Thank you very much. Thank you.